uh, 1 Corinthians. And uh, uh, some great reminders in this chapter about how we are to live as followers of Christ and uh, a great uh, encouragement to us as uh, Christ being the foundation of the church. And so uh, we'll read uh, this chapter together. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Of course, this is Paul writing, but I, uh, that's Paul, speaking to brothers. So brothers and sisters, fellow believers there in Corinth, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. And so as he addresses uh, the folks uh, that make up the church in Corinth, uh, they have a problem. Uh, they are believers, they're brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, he refers to them as being in Christ, but they aren't spiritual. They are people of the flesh. Some of your translations may say uh, carnal, fleshly. Uh, but the idea is that they are immature Christians. They are infants in Christ. They are believers. They have placed their faith in Christ. Heaven is theirs, but they are not maturing in the faith. They are still uh, behaving not like spiritual people, but like carnal people, but like people of the flesh. They they, they are not, uh, what they believe has it impacted how they're living uh, much yet. And so uh, these Christians uh, are, are thinking and acting more in the flesh than they are in the spirit. And, and, and we realize that as believers, we still battle the flesh, don't we? <laughs> you and I battle the flesh every day. There's, there's this spiritual side, yes, absolutely. But there is this fleshly side that, that is at battle. Uh, and, and sometimes we let the flesh uh, win uh, in certain areas of our life. And so um, these, these carnal fleshly Christians are, are making up uh, the majority of the church. Uh, and so they're, they're dwelled by the Spirit. They've got the same Holy Spirit that you and I received when we accepted Christ. They're indwelled by the Holy Spirit, but they are, are letting the flesh uh, rule them. And, and so this is uh, the group that Paul is confronting as he begins uh, chapter uh, 3. Um, and so, uh, it, this isn't natural man. Natural man is unsaved. Uh, then you have spiritual man, and then you have uh, who who Jesus is referring to as as carnal Christians. Uh, and so, uh, these are these are believers. Uh, we don't want to. These are not um, natural man, as as other uh, letters and writings of Paul refer to non believers. All right, verse two. I fed you with milk. Not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now, you are not yet ready. And so he, he's continuing this idea that they are, they're fleshly, they're, they're immature in, in, in their faith and as followers of Christ. And, uh, and, and because of that, they aren't ready for, for solid food. Um, and so, uh, it's, it's not the idea, you don't have to be uh, smart uh, or a genius to understand uh, um, the gospel or God's word, but uh, in, in their immaturity, they are not seeking after uh, God's word. And so it's not that it takes a certain intellectual ability to comprehend uh, the gospel, but it does uh, take a, a maturity and a desire to learn and a desire to receive uh, God's word. And they are not yet to the spiritual maturity where they desire to receive uh, God's word. And so uh, they are not able to uh, receive it. Um, sometimes when my girls eat a bunch of junk food, they don't want to eat the meal that we have ready for them. You know, you, you, you work hard, you have dinner ready, but if you eat a bunch of junk food right before, you're not hungry for the real food. And in the same way as these carnal Christians were filling themselves with junk food, 
uh, it, it made them less hungry for the spiritual food uh, that, that Paul was trying to give them. And so uh, a, a good reminder to us, what are we filling ourselves with? Because uh, if we're not careful, we can fill ourselves with so much junk that we don't have that hunger and that desire for the spiritual food. And that's uh, the problem these carnal, fleshly Christians uh, were having. And so they weren't ready to receive the, the solid food. They were filled up on, on junk food, as it were. Verse 3, for you are still of the flesh, for while there is jealousy. So now we're going to give some examples of how they're living out uh, this carnal Christianity. For you are still of the flesh, for while there's jealousy and strife among you, and you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollo, so you not being merely human. And so Paul's now giving an example of, of one area of their life that they're, they're living more as uh, fleshly, uh, carnal Christians than they are spiritually. Uh, and, and that example is that there was uh, strife, there was envy, there were uh, divisions and, and jealousy going on among uh, the body of believers. And so uh, they were behaving like merely men. In other words, they're behaving like unsaved people. Uh, you're acting like lost people. Uh, lost people have jealousy and envy and strife because they don't have the, the, the spirit inside of them. And it's the same idea that we're looking at in the Sermon on the Mount, right? I mean, Jesus is saying, look, you live for a different kingdom. You're part of the kingdom of heaven. You're part of God's kingdom, not part of this earthly kingdom. You should live different. Your, your, your life should be different. We are living to a higher calling through Jesus Christ. And, and Paul's saying this same thing. You're acting in a human way. This is... This is this is people that are part of the kingdom of earth, not the kingdom of heaven, uh, with all of this division and strife and, and jealousy that's going on even inside of the church. To the point, again, where he's already talked about uh, those that had created divisions because some were following Paul and, and, and Apollos. And so uh, we see he's bringing this up uh, again, that there was some uh, division uh, over uh, these kind of fan clubs that were created of, of, of certain people. Verse 5, what then is Apollo? So what is Paul? It's funny he writes that since he is Paul. Servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I love that. He's, we're servants of God. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. And so uh, we, we see in, in these verses, who, who am I? Who's Apollos? Who are we? We are just servants of, of God. Um, and we, we are workers of Christ. Uh, we, have, we have done different jobs. We have had different results. But ultimately, it is God who blesses and gives the growth and gives the increase. Um, when, a, when a farmer plants a seed and waters it, he really doesn't make it grow, does he? <laughs> he, he does some work, and that, is, uh, that effort is, is blessed. But uh, the miracle of life brings the growth. God brings the growth. The farmer plants, the, the farmer waters. And all the farmer can do is provide the right environment uh, for growth and, and trust uh, the miracle of, of life that God has, has given us in the natural world and also uh, in the spiritual world as well. And so we do the same thing as, as ministers of Christ. And I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about all of us. Uh, uh, we believe in the priesthood of all believers that we are all ministers, we are all disciple makers. And so as, as all of us have that role, we have to remember, we, we create the environment, we, we plant seeds, we do all we can to water those seeds. Uh, but ultimately, we rely on the power of God uh, to bring salvation to people, 
uh, and to open their eyes to their need for the gospel. And so uh, we work hard as followers of Christ, but we know that the results are, are the power of God. And so we can rest in that. Uh, we, we don't want to take the pressure off ourselves to, to do what we can to work hard for the kingdom, but we can take the pressure off as far as results, relying on uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 8, he who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field God's building. And so uh, we, we see in, in, in these verses that uh, in, in combating the Christian, the desire in Corinth among those believers to divide among Paul, among Paulos to follow certain believers, Paul is reminding them, we are, we are one. We're all on the same team. Uh, all of us are, are striving uh, to, to further the kingdom of God. We're all on the same team. We will all be uh, rewarded by, by God for all of eternity. And um, it, it's silly to say that planning is what's really important when uh, those that are watering are, are equally as important. Uh, it's important to plant, but it's equally important to water. And you, it's pointless to water if nothing's been planted. And so regardless of what our role is, uh, in, in the kingdom of God, all of those roles, whatever spiritual gifts God has given you, as you use those spiritual gifts to serve uh, the kingdom, to serve his church, whatever that role is, it's important. Uh, and we are all uh, striving uh, on the same team. Are some roles more upfront than others? Yes. Uh, some roles look different. Some roles demand different uh, abilities or spiritual gifts, but all roles uh, are equally important. Whether you're, you're teaching three-year-olds or teaching 60-year-olds, it is equally vital uh, as, as a ministry. And uh, so we are all fellow workers and we are all uh, one and we will all be rewarded uh, properly. On earth, we might have some reward but ultimately, we know that it comes uh, for all eternity. Verse 10, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I love uh, these verses uh, for what it says about uh, the church uh, Paul and Apollos have had different roles in the church. Paul speaks of uh, helping lay the foundation. We know that Paul founded the church in Corinth. Uh, he set the, the foundation, but again, he prefaced that work that one can only lay, lay a foundation, which is Jesus Christ. And so uh, he helped start that church in Corinth, yes, but that church's foundation was Jesus Christ. And, uh, of course, he speaks of other people's roles since he started the church. Others have come along and built upon it. But ultimately, it, the foundation is Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to see the side effects if, if, if it's built on anything else. Uh, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see that in this passage, but we've seen it uh, in our own lives uh, as well. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest. For the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. And so, uh, as he lists off these building materials, uh, you can already tell by, by reading through them what, what, will be, what will happen if fire is set to these uh, uh, materials. And the idea is, if the, foundation, if, if the foundation of the church is anything other than Christ, it's going to crumble. 
we have seen this. Uh, if, if the foundation of a church is the personality of a pastor, when that pastor dies, when that pastor moves, when that pastor falls morally, the church crumbles. If the foundation of that church is the flamboyant personality of a pastor, if the foundation is anything other than Jesus Christ, when, when it's met with fire, when, when something happens, uh, it will be revealed. If it's built on hay and wood and straw, it's the same story as the piggies. Piggies, piggies built the houses on different things and the wind came and guess what? Now the wolf, wolf came and blew. I, it's been a long time. I don't, uh. Wolf came, blew. If it's built out of straw, hay, we know what's going to happen. It's going to crumble. And so uh, how we lay that foundation, what the church is centered around, has to be Christ. It can't be a personality. It can't be a, a fancy building. It can't be anything other than uh, Christ because fire will test the work, as Paul says, and it will be revealed. And so um, a strong warning because you and I have, uh, most of you, well, all of you have, have lived longer than me to see things come and go. <laughs> there have been cathedrals built, no reference to the Crystal Cathedral, I'm sure. There have been things built that were centered uh, and, and things come and go when, when Christ isn't kept at uh, the forefront. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he'll receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he'll suffer loss, though he himself will be saved not only as through fire. So this is a continuation of, of the same warnings that's a very sobering thought uh, that, that everything we do is, um, is, is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and I always pray that that's true of, of us here at Westside. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? Wow, the implications of that truth uh, are, are endless. We could spend uh, weeks talking about the implications of the fact that we are the temple of God, that God's presence, which the temple is a, a representation of, of where the presence of God is. And so the idea that, that we as believers, as Christians, are the temple, uh, uh, wow, what a, what a picture of God's dwelling inside of us through the Holy Spirit. Dwells in you, and if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Uh, and so uh, a, a strong warning to anyone that uh, defiles God's temple, his church, his holy people, um, because how, how they uh, treat his temple, ooh, um, uh, we've seen uh, the repercussions all throughout uh, church history through uh, the Old Testament of those uh, that defile uh, God's presence, God's temple. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in his age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God." We, this is a, a repeat of what we talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, those in Corinth were seeking after worldly wisdom. They had elevated uh, worldly wisdom uh, to a point that that was what they were seeking. And they, were, they wanted wisdom, which is a noble thing. But where they were seeking wisdom was not in God's word, but was in what the world was providing as far as wisdom. If you go to a college or university today seeking wisdom, good luck. <laughs> uh, you probably won't find it. Uh, wisdom is found in, in God's word and in right relationship with him. And so, uh, again, Paul's warning. It's a noble thing to look for wisdom, but uh, become a, a, a fool first and realize uh, that, that there is no wisdom to be found uh, outside of, of 
God and his word. For the wisdom of this world's folly with God, for it's written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. God sees through uh, the, the foolishness that the world often calls wisdom. And so uh, a, a strong warning here uh, as we seek after wisdom. He's not saying that wisdom's bad. Uh, wisdom's a noble thing to seek after, but we're to seek God as the source of uh, our wisdom, ultimately seeking his word for uh, our wisdom. So let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours and you are Christ's and Christ is God's. And so we see an interesting uh, progression here. Ultimately, let no one boast or glory in uh, men. We're prone to do that, aren't we? <laughs> Uh, we are prone to glory in men. We, we, elevate, uh, we elevate man uh, very quickly. Uh, we, are, we get excited about uh, and elevate famous people, uh, wealthy people, uh, successful uh, athletes, whatever it is. We, we, we naturally tend to glory in, in man. Uh, we value the gifts and honors of, of men more than the gifts and honors uh, that God gives. And so uh, we need that reminder. Let no one boast in, in men. There are heroes that we uh, can celebrate, but we ultimately, uh, of course, uh, have, have, have God to live for, not man. And for all these things are, are, are yours. Uh, in Christ, God has given us uh, dominion. We have uh, authority. We, we received that in the garden. Uh, but ultimately, we know uh, that, that even within Christian liberty, uh, we are Christ. Uh, and Christ is, of course, uh, uh, God in the flesh. And so we realize that, that, that authority, even though all is ours and there's great liberty as, as mankind, as believers in Christ, that ultimately uh, we belong to Christ, that we are His as His followers. And, uh, of course, ultimately that makes us uh, belong to God. And so um, a, a great chapter, um, chapter three, some, some ideas that we're familiar with uh, that, that appear elsewhere in scripture as well. But uh, uh, join, join with me in, in praying daily uh, that, that Christ remains the foundation, the center of, of our church. Uh, uh, what a legacy we have uh, of over a hundred years of Christ being that that foundation and, and a legacy of of great pastors that you have known uh, over the years. Uh, some of you go back multiple multiple pastors here at Westside, but but what a legacy that they all pointed to Christ and and kept him as uh, the foundation. And and we will pray to continue that for generations to come as as well. All right, let's pray. Uh, for that uh, as we leave this morning. Father, we thank you for your church. Yes, here at Westside, but Father, uh, your church uh, universal that uh, you sent your son to, to die for, to save, to redeem. And Father, we pray as, as your church, as those that represent you here on earth now, we pray that we will uh, seek to glorify and honor you to point others to you. And Father, we thank you uh, for the foundation you have laid here at Westside. We thank you for those that have been uh, working so diligently through these years to keep Christ at the center. And Father, we pray for that for generations to come. Uh, when, when, when fires come, when testing comes, when 
the winds blow, Father, we know as we stay focused on you as, as our cornerstone, as our foundation, Father, we know uh, that, that you, your church, will be triumphant uh, even to the end. And we rest in that today. We pray these things in the name of Christ, who is our Savior, who is our foundation. It's in his name we pray. Amen.